I think Florida State needs to calm down. To quote Taylor Swift. You ever like break up with a girl and she doesn't take it very well? Starts acting kind of irrational, throwing things around, maybe slash your tires, write the word cheater on the side of your car, even though you didn't cheat. It's kind of Florida State right now. And I get it. There's only four spots in a college football playoff. You're undefeated. You feel like you deserve one of those spots. I understand the frustration, anger, grief that comes with that. But the idea that it was the Atlantic Coast Conference that kept you out of the college football playoff solely, that was the only reason I don't think is right. And I understand the frustration and anger with the conference and the lack of prioritizing the big brands in the, in the conference, prioritizing the equal distribution of paltry TV funds isn't great. But if Florida State feels like they're going to call a board of trustees meeting for tomorrow morning, as that's the first step of getting out of the ACC, I think they're going to be sadly mistaken. Because the idea that Florida State, all they have to do is just say, we're going to challenge the ACC grant of rights, and we're going to get out of this league, and we're going to go somewhere else, is it, sort of like a, a prisoner escaping from prison. Like, all you're going to do is prioritize, think about, plot, plan, figure out how you're going to get out of those walls and outside that razor fence. And then once you do that, go, okay, now what? And that's what this plan kind of equates to, is just focus on changing this one thing that we want changed that we're not happy with. And then what are you going to do? I haven't thought that far. It's the the Joker in the Dark Knight being like, uh, chasing a car, dog chasing cars. I don't know what I'd do when I got one. That's Florida State trying to leave the ACC. The Big Ten has made it somewhat clear. Now, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't put a ton of stock in this. That there's only so much room at the end in the Big Ten, and there are only so many remaining slots. They say that. It's 20. The cap is 20. And you're at 18. And I think the conference is always going to keep a spot for Notre Dame. That's just my opinion. Is that, and that you can call the Big Ten's bluff at that point, where if you say 20 is your limit and you get to 24 with some schools from the ACC, if the AC and the ACC is not going to dissolve right away, let me tell you that now. If they say 20 is the limit, they're always going to keep a spot for Notre Dame. So keep that in the back of your mind. But the big thing is, is if the ACC grant of rights was challengeable and it was an easy slam dunk case, that all we have to do is X, Y, Z, Florida State wouldn't be in the ACC anymore. Florida State would be in the SEC or the Big Ten. Maybe the Big 12, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but that is ridiculous. If it was that easy, the ACC wouldn't exist anymore because Louisville would be in the Big 12 alongside UCF and West Virginia and Cincinnati. And North Carolina, Virginia, maybe Duke, probably Georgia Tech and Clemson would either be in the SEC or the Big Ten. If it was that easy, if it was all we have to do is challenge it, then it would have happened by now. It would have been done, squashed over with, and some high-priced lawyer would have made a lot of money arguing in court that it's unconstitutional or find a loophole somewhere, somehow, whatever. But by all accounts, the ACC grant of rights is lock steady, locked up through 2036. And if you want out, that's fine. But you're gonna pay your money to the ACC if you get out. If you if you want out, and if and you you see it right now with the Pac-12 with Washington State and Oregon State, 
no, North Carolina, North Carolina, Notre Dame, Florida State, Clemson, Miami, Georgia Tech, Virginia, or maybe Virginia Tech could conceivably have homes in other conferences. But Syracuse, Wake Forest, Boston College, NC State aren't going to be gigantic targets for the Big Ten or the SEC. They're just not great fits. So if the big-time brands in the conference wanted to leave, what makes you think that Syracuse, Boston College, NC State, and the list goes on, dissolve the ACC and don't just hoard that money from Florida State, Miami, Clemson, North Carolina, et cetera, till 2036. It sounds as if it can't be undone. Now, you got to get everybody sort of on board to pull in the same direction, and I don't, I don't think that's going to happen, to dissolve the conference, to let those bigger schools meander their way to higher paydays and greener pastures. It's just not going to happen. So Florida State needs to pump the brakes just a bit because I understand the frustration. I really honestly, truly do. But it's a once-in-a-lifetime situation that you're in right now and that they're and I don't have a problem with the school, the athletic department, the fan base, boosters, whoever, recognizing like, hey, we're not happy in the in the ACC. Let's go somewhere else. I get that. But realistically, you're primed and ready to dominate that conference for a, a pretty decent amount of time here in a 12-team expanded playoff. So you could argue, and, and I think you might be right, if your argument is Florida State did not make the college football playoff this year because they are in the Atlantic Coast Conference. It was the fifth best Power 5 conference. Only four teams get in. Four conference champions are in the college football playoff. One had to be left out, and it was you. And I get the frustration, get the anger, but I don't know that that's necessarily the most well-placed spot to put your anger. I think it's one of those you just got to eat, and that sucks. Like, there is nothing worse than not being able to just say what you want to say about somebody or say what you want to say about this person, that person, these 13 other schools. There's, there's not a whole lot that's more difficult than to just swallow your pride and you have to sometimes just let people be wrong and know that they're wrong and deal with it. It sucks. And I hate it. But sometimes, and that's part of like growing up is you just like, you got to, you, you got to pick your battles, right? Like that, that's the like constant refrain from a lot of people. You got to pick your battles. And I don't know that this is the battle to pick because you're primed up and ready to go to dominate this conference for a long time that in a 12 team playoff, Florida state should be in the playoff more often than not. That's not an outrageous statement. I don't think. And, and I think we're going to talk maybe next week about in a 12 team playoff, which programs benefit the most. I think Florida state is on that list right now sucks because you feel like you've accomplished what you should have accomplished to get in the college football playoff. You probably are right. But also, you're part of the resistance that fought against the expansion of the college football playoff. So you kind of got yourself to blame a little bit. And again, not a fun spot to be in to confront that reality that we're part of the reason that there isn't a 12-team playoff right now. But you're primed and ready to make the college football playoff more often than not in a 12-team expanded playoff in the ACC. Do you think Cal, Stanford, SMU are going to challenge you? No, your challenges are going to come from if Miami can ever put it together. Miami, Clemson, North Carolina. Does that strike a ton of fear into you 
as a, I don't know how we're going to get to college football playoff with that schedule in front of us, because it wouldn't me. It's still an advantageous position for Florida State to be in. No matter how much it sucks right now. You can count the money. You can say that we're going to get lapped. We're going to get passed by, et cetera. If, if money were that, money matters. Obviously, it matters. And I don't know how big of a discrepancy there can be. And I think there's a fear of instead of a power five, there's going to be a power two. And if you're not on one of those last, last lifeboats, what are you going to do? I don't think the Big 12 is a last lifeboat for Florida State. If somehow, some way, they can convince a court that the ACC grant of rights shouldn't stand and they can get out of the conference, you have to go to the Big 10 or the SEC. The Big 12 is, at best, a lateral move because the Big 12 is going to get significantly less money than the Big 10 and the SEC. And a Texas and oklahoma Big 12 is just okay, especially on the gridiron when, like, Oklahoma State is going to be viewed as, like, the team – to beat when Kansas is going to be one of the schools. It's like, ah, you know, you're going to have to get through Kansas to get to the college football playoff here. Like, it's not, it's not great. So you're geographically an outlier unless you're like, Oh man, I can't wait for Florida state to play central Florida, Cincinnati and West Virginia. The big 12 is a sidestep at best for Florida state. It's the sec and big 10. I think you could get the Big Ten to want Florida State because at some point, and we've we've seen it over the course of the last 20 years, that college football is going to cannibalize regions. Or maybe cannibalize isn't the right word. It's, it's going to devour and become a predator for regions. And at some point the SEC is going to have to try to get into the Big Ten's territory or the Big Ten's going to try to have to get into the SEC's territory. I don't know what Florida State brings to the SEC. Another big brand? Okay. Like, th- there's only so many of those that you can cram into one conference that is going to make a TV partner like ESPN pony up more money. ESPN already holds the rights for Florida State home games for the overwhelming majority of Florida State games at a pretty decent price. The idea that they're going to pony up more money for something that they already technically own doesn't fly. But you could, and SEC network subscriptions are already in Florida because of Florida because of Georgia, because of Alabama and LSU. So Florida State doesn't add any SEC network subscribers to the SEC. Same thing with Clemson. They're already there from South Carolina. But Florida State does add Big Ten network subscribers in Florida and potentially gives more games. And and believe me, the Big Ten – if the AC, if Florida State can convince the courts that the ACC should be blown up, Florida State's not the only school from the ACC joining the Big Ten. But if you get an influx of schools at that point to where instead of being 18, an 18-team 18 league, you're a 24-league team, 24-team league, you can't put all of that stuff on ESPN NBC, CBS, or on, I beg your pardon, on Fox, CBS, and NBC. Like, you're going to have to go to ESPN and be like, hey, do you want our fourth tier games every week? Even if you're putting them on ESPN Plus or ABC? Because the ACC's not going to exist anymore if Florida State can bust it up. And, and that's the reality of the situation. If Florida State can turn this around and say, hey, 
we want out and they can open that door, it's going to be a mad dash to the door. And again, it's going to be a fight for the last lifeboat out of town because the Big Ten says it's only got room for 20 and there's come, they're going to keep room for Florida State or for Notre Dame. I think you could argue that Florida State could convince the Big Ten, like, hey, we're worth it. We're worth it. But I think it's a much more difficult uphill battle than Florida State fans. And right now, kind of the media is making it out to be. It's right. The, the There's an emergency board of trustees meeting scheduled for tomorrow at 10 a.m. And it's the first step in Florida State making its way out of the ACC. It's the first step in Florida State attempting to make it out of the ACC. But again, if it were that simple, the ACC would not exist anymore. Because the ACC, those ACC schools that want out, sat around and watched as Texas, Oklahoma, USC, UCLA, Washington, and Oregon got on the lifeboats that they want to be on. And if they wanted to be on those lifeboats and they thought thought there was a way to get to that big ship, they would have done it by now. And I don't know how many times you have to do this song and dance of you know, aren't we and our lawyers kind of look at the look at the contract that we signed with the ACC through 2036 and it really just kind of, you know, we're locked in. There's not a whole lot we can do about it. So being extra pissed right now <laughs> doesn't make that fact any different. Doesn't make the fact that for a couple of years now, everybody has thought, I hate the way this is set up and man, I wish there was a way to get out. But it sure doesn't look like there is. You being going from like, I'm mildly unhappy about this. To be like, I am pissed. Doesn't change that fact. So I know that it sucks. I know that right now is not fun. I get it. But you kind of got to take a chill pill, step back from the edge a little bit, recognize that you're being that girlfriend that got broke up with that's just slightly irrational and saying and doing things that you'll look back on and be like, I can't believe I did that. Because I don't think spending millions of dollars in legal fees just to get the answer that you probably already know is the answer is a wise use of funds if you're worried about being lapped by the field in the financial department. It's just not a great idea. Now, I I think I've said before, I'm an agent of chaos. I really enjoy things being in flux. It would be wild as hell if Florida State busted the ACC open and to see once you turn the lights on where those cockroaches scatter because there are not enough seats at the table for everybody. And who's wheeling and dealing and what comes of it after that Pandora's box gets opened. I just don't think it's as easily opened as Florida State, Florida State Athletic Department, the university, the fans, the boosters want you to believe. Would they like it to be super simple? Yeah, I think so. They go to court and say, well, wait a second. This right here invalidates the entire contract. We're out. Peace. See ya. If it was that easy, I think it would have happened by now. And there's a reason it hasn't. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. If you are watching on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all of the great college football content that we're pumping out here at Saturday Glory. If you're listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a really long way in helping out the channel. See you tomorrow right here on the Daily Huddle with Saturday Glory.